Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's Kafir Middle East Update. It's the week of July 9th. Uh, just a reminder before we get started on our news bites, make sure you grab a hold of our PDF PowerPoint that accompanies this presentation. And you can get that on our website at holygroundexplorations.com or it should be part of the link that you just click on on the YouTube channel. So, what's going on in the Middle East? What's happening uh, at least this week? Uh, let's start off with a little humor, all right? The Iranians have a electronic clock that counts down to the prophesied destruction of the Jewish state, supposedly in 2040. Big clock, countdown going on, well, it abruptly stopped. The Islamic Republic's p display, uh, because it's the doomsday clock, it's called, and because of the power outages nationwide, they can't seem to get it back up going again. I, w I wonder whose hand is truly on the clock. Well, last Tuesday, by the way, marked the 79th anniversary of the day that the Frank family, Anne Frank and her family during World War II began hiding in the annex of a house in Amsterdam. Let me encourage you, if you have junior hires, um, the diary of Anne Frank, once again, a must read. And then uh, Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah in the north, makes a major declaration. It has caused some uh, um, negative feedback. Um, what shall we say? Things are happening because of these comments. But he basically went on and is quoted by saying, there are no people in the Israeli entity, no such thing as Israel, they are all occupiers and settlers. And again, he makes this speech. He's declaring because of what took place in Gaza that Palestine is victorious. If you know anything that's taking place in Lebanon these days, it's as bad as bad can be. Starvation, uh, unemployment, uh, things are horrible in Lebanon. Now, Israel is offering to help in some way, and uh, we'll see what Hezbollah ends up doing. Hezbollah is holding out some sort of golden ticket or some sort of carrot, indicating if they just yield and make compromises with this nation, can you guess which nation this would be? Uh, they will come to our aid. Can you imagine Iran? occupying the northern border of Israel. That's the country that Nasrallah is offering that will come, will be sort of the, the posse that's coming to the rescue of Lebanon. We'll have to wait to see what transpires, but it is worth our attention. Now, our major articles for this week a defense minister, Benny Gantz, has warned that violence between Israel and the Palestinian terrorist group Hamas in the Gaza Strip could erupt at any time once again. He goes on to say it's a very sensitive place. Uh, we're aware of a lot of strategic areas that can be targeted. I think the tensions are ratcheted up so much so because of the recent uh, fires that have broken out in the Negev due to the incendiary balloons that Gaza, that Hamas is launching from the Gaza border. And once again, it's taking up to previous forest fires in Israel due to these from years past, take up to 30 years to recover from the devastation. And so Israel has drawn a line in the sand once again saying, you launch balloons, we'll launch our jets, our rockets. So again, 
at any time. Um, another explosion in Iran, uh, a warehouse west of Tehran was reportedly hit by another, can you believe it, mysterious explosion. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard uh, affiliates, uh, they basically come on and they confirm the fact that there was a, a, a facility used to produce uranium enrichment centrifuges that mysteriously blew up. Uh, once again, the former director of the Mossad, Yossi uh, Cohen, has always hinted that the Jewish state has indeed been behind the recent attacks regarding Tehran's nuclear infrastructure. And so there is a smirk and a smile, but once again, I'm not sure it's that mysterious any longer. And then we have Canada. An article that's called, uh, Oh No Canada. Uh, the Palestinian Authority leader, Muhammad Abbas, has called upon Canada to halt its, to assist in helping to halt Israel's aggressions. Uh, Canada has a record of being much more pro-Palestinian than is Israel. Um, a lot of BDS organizations. Uh, Canada has again and again reconfirmed its long-standing support for the creation of a Palestinian state, living side by side, quote, in peace. And we know what that in peace means because we know what the Hamas charter set calls for, the destruction of the Jewish state. So this peace, I don't think is P-E-A-C-E. -E. I think it's P-I-E-C-E. -E. Palestinians want nothing more than the destruction and the annihilation of the nation of Israel. From the river to the sea, that's the phrase. You see the pictures, you see the photos, you see the artwork. All of Israel is to be Palestine. I don't see how in the world there's a possibility of a two-state solution. Once again, we'll wait and see. Um, I think this is positive. This is a first for the UN. They've come out and they've spoken against or they've condemned the use of the internet as a tool to encourage and recruit terrorism. There's a photo here. I think it's slide uh, seven. You'll see this is that Hamas charter that I mentioned. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam obliterates it, just as it's obliterated, obliterated, get it, others before it. And so once again, this is a recruitment of terrorism, and it's being used by either Facebook, Twitter, or um, Instagram, or whatever, and for the first time, the UN has spoken out against it. We'll wait and see what kind of impact that has. And I always like to try, at least to end on a positive note, new discovery that's now unveiled. You can actually visit this if Israel ever opens. But archaeologists have uncovered the lavishly endowed building, which was erected sometime around 20 to 30 AD. It was probably used to welcome important dignitaries and members of the elite on their way to the Temple Mount. And so you can see photos of this. It's pretty amazing to see. I'm excited that it's now open to the public that you can go through and you can actually see um, history. You can see Israeli, the presence of Israel in the second time. This is the time of Jesus, right? So can't wait to check that out. Once again, denial of the Palestinians, denying that Israel was ever, ever in Jerusalem. No buildings, no structures, no, no proof whatsoever of the existence of Israel 
in Jerusalem. That's, that's from the Palestinians. So once again, can't wait to check this out. That's the report for this particular week. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and add to that prayer that Israel would open soon. Uh, many of us just can't wait to get back to the land. There's something special about Israel. And if you love your Bible, if you love your Bible, you got to get there. You got to walk the land. You got to allow all of those stories, all of those black and white words to turn into living color. God bless you and shalom.